God. So we were talking, by the way. Ooh, I don't have the link to the D. Did, oh, man. Send me the link to the D Live channel. In the, you want me to send it on Facebooks? Yeah. And then I'll put it in the Liberty Principle uh, for so for those, you know, give the people of give the people an option if you'd like to you prefer to watch on the Facebooks, or you well, prefer and, to watch walk on watch on D Live. Doesn't matter. And if you want to check out the pre-show, usually we start a little bit early and I start streaming. So if you want to catch that, it's a little more loose. Oh, you you didn't you didn't message you messaged the wrong Paul Gordon. Oh, there's two Paul Gordons now? Yes. Can the okay. real Paul Gordon please stand up? This is Paul wants to get floored by a body. I can't even find you. So I can't even find hands, you. Hands, you guys intermingle toes, <laughs> which is kind of awkward. <laughs> John is – John Smith is our special uh, guest host, I guess, sort of. You're, John Smith, you're our remote Telegram guest host. There you go. There you go. Guest host, guest host. He got hosed oh, by oh, a oh. guest host. And I don't know if I should see a doctor about it. But He's got a rash. It's like in between my uh, butt cheeks. I don't know what the fuck's going yeah. on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're not family friendly, John. <laughs> But that doesn't mean I'm going to stop playing your messages. So you ain't psyching me out, man. <laughs> we ain't turning nothing off. Yeah. Uh, welcome okay. to Is Daily Tuesday. This is the last ever Is Daily Tuesday. Is, Am I off the show now? Am I finally free? Oh, that hurts. Oh, that, oh that hurts. I turned it around. I turned it around. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts a lot. No, it's... uh. I'm not sure. I think you and I have to talk about what we're going to call it. I think it's going to be Is Daily's Lozilla. But, and it'll be a little bit more open, and it's going to change a little. Yeah. It's still in Is Daily, but it's not going to be. Instead of doing the day things, because sometimes we have to switch when we do shows. So it's, it's like we did that before. So we yeah, did we Is did Daily the, Tuesday. On a Thursday. It? So that was a little did, weird. Yeah. So... Like, yeah, it was it was actually Lou Sanders' idea, the co-host on his Daily Thursday. Still don't have a name for that. Like, don't have a name at all for what we're going to call the Is Daily Thursday show. I think this show is going to be Is Daily Lozilla, but we may want to talk about it. Is Daily's Lozilla, but I'm not 100% sure. We might want to come up with something different. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I think we should just call it by the show and lose the Is Daily. No, no. Is Daily is what I'm getting everybody to subscribe to. So they, there's there's one feed for somebody that wants to watch all the shows. And then all the shows have their own feed. So it, that's why I'm yeah. keeping the Is Daily. So we should just call it whatever the show is and then have the Is Daily as a separate thing. Not as a separate thing, but like a curation, just a list. That's the Is Daily. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you check the Is Daily blah 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 feed for Lilzilla, longer leash, whatever. I'm, Gun I'm, stuff, and I, then I think, it's... I think it's <laughs> going to have something that says Is Daily's Lilzilla, but we'll just call it Lilzilla. Yeah, yeah. I think I, that's more convenient. But I yeah. keep calling it E Live. I'm like, oh, Is Daily Tuesday, because ah, I don't know what to call it. Well, the name of the show is this Daily Tuesday. That's the name of the show, right? But it won't be when when we come back from the hiatus. Hiatus. I'm I'm thinking. Are are we going to stick with Lozilla? Is that what we're doing? We could. Well, we have time to talk about it. I, we I'm could call like, it Lozilla the Science Ponderer. That's stupid. I know. Just like our show. Could we call it the, uh, oh, that hurts. It's true, though. That's what makes it hurt more. That's not a bad thing. It's, uh, I don't know. Maybe we could call it like the, uh, you know what would be cool if we gave it a name like something like a sci-fi, like, 
You know, like one of these bad Saturday sci-fi movie feature titles? You got something? We should put a space helmet on Lil Zilla. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, a T-Rex with a helmet. How about Lil Zilla Mystery Theater? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, that would be amazing. What do you think? Lozilla Mystery Theater or Lozilla Sci-Fi Theater? I would rather do Mystery Theater. Even then we gotta have a... Mystery Theater 3000, they'll show us. No, we got to have random numbers after it every time. Oh, that reminds me. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> What's the name of that site where everything that you've ever written exists? Oh, the Biblio... Biblio. Uh, I, have, I, I, I did a Steam It thing on it, and nobody liked it. I use that information war tag that you use all the time. Yeah, nobody yeah. liked it. Nobody liked it. Okay, so what is the site where everything that was... Did it get taken down? Did it get taken down? Oh, no. Babel. Uh, Babel. Library of Babel.info. Okay. Oh, yeah, we should totally use that. Yeah, well, I'm actually thinking of doing it right now. Do it. Okay, search. Okay, hold on. Let me get the uh, the website here. <laughs> what can we pick to check? Um, How about the description for the show? It's a good, easy check, right? I don't know. Holy crap, we have 20 people watching. Hi, 20 people. What's up, guys? What's up? So let's do this. So this is just a simple little check. Uh, you know what? I'm going to check the full. Hold on. I'm going to check the full description. These are the stories, by the way, if you see my version. Uh, I don't know if you can you do it on your end. You can bring up the Biblio on your end so your audience can see. I could I could build, I could I could build it up. I could bring. I could, okay. So on yes. this episode of Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon. On Lozilla, the Flat Earth Rocketeer. On uh, is I Science. Mars has water. On uh, I Ponder. Let's see. On I Ponder. Hold on. Uh, let me hold on and put space in here. Okay. So, oh, I got that wrong. Water. I just pulled it up. Okay, um, ready for the search. Here we go. So I have Melodizing Crudling Physicianes, Isonating Mars Has Water, Deadlined Existential Palynologies, Patella, Thanatography, Misadded Quail, Welfaristic, Pirated, Substrahend, Scarthing, Ridiculous Karate's Lasso. And there it is. Page 371 of 410 of the document titled, well, there it is, the title. That's OR95 blah, 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 whatever. That document, page 371 of that document, it says, On this episode of His Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon, on Lozilla the Flat Earth Rocketeer on iScience Mars has had water on iPonder ending human human by as in AI? I don't know if they got that quite right, but still, pretty much uh, <laughs> yeah, all your thoughts they are all your exist. thoughts are already there. So that's how there. we're going to start off the show from now on. It's going to yeah. be that. We'll we're going to start off with, we should pick the description of the show and then we should pick like some random really bizarre thing. Yes. And that's how we're that's where we're gonna start off. That's yes. that's how the show is gonna start off, and I think we should go with a more like campy fifty sci fi kind of vibe to the whole thing. I could do that, and I can just be like that stoner dude. That's like, whoa, how am I here, man? Okay, <laughs> dude. I don't know. About I don't know. The stoner dude, but okay. Yeah, we had stoners back then. Oh, dude, I didn't even promote the show yet, dude. I gotta oh. promote the show. If you guys haven't caught on. 
this is <laughs> we just showed up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally our shows are planned and I got stuff. I, I actually did plan the show. I got stuff. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to let you guys know that we originally had a different top story than than we have today, Don't, didn't we? We did. We changed it. We changed we, it. It's just something a little more, I think it's a better story. It's a better story? Eh, I think it's close. I think it's close. I think you can make the case that it's a better story. The one was about robots and feminists. And then this one. Why don't we get to it, dude? Let's just do this story. Let's, let's get this story out of the way. I mean, we, we talked about... <laughs> Rocket Man. Rocket Man. Burn it. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me just go here. Hold on. This is about one minute and ten seconds long. If you're on DLive, you can't see this. So if you're so on you D Live, you might want to switch back and forth. Really, that's what you should be doing. When yeah, when can... you get to a part of the show that has a visual that he doesn't have, switch to that. And then when he has a visual that I don't have, switch to that. Come on. Expand your horizons. Why watch one show on one platform when you can switch back and forth? You know, be really part of the cutting edge here. So here we go. This is the rocket launch. Do you hear it? A man named Mad Mike Hughes launched himself in a self-made rocket to prove his belief that the Earth is flat. Hughes's rocket soared 1,875 feet off the ground and ended in a hard landing. Hughes, who launched his rocket near Amboy, California, pulled two parachutes while falling back to Earth. He called the result a hard landing and told the AP, I'll feel it in the morning. Mad Mike acknowledged his rocket launch was dangerous, telling the AP, The thing wants to kill you ten different ways. It was not his first attempt at launching itself into space to prove his theory that the Earth is flat. Paramedics met Hughes after he plunged back to Earth and beat the ever-living crap out of him for being an idiot. Um, no, they didn't do that. <laughs> do I believe the Earth is shaped like a Frisbee? I believe it is. Do I know for sure? No. That's why I did this. He hopes to one day build a balloon that will take him 68 miles up to space. Dude, that's a beautiful story. It's a beautiful so, story of a man that had a dream to build a rocket that got squashed many times before until he had the support of the Flat Earth community. The only community dumb enough to think that you can see the curvature wow, of the from 1,800 feet. Oh. John Smith says he can't wait to get the T-shirts he ordered from the Agora. What the heck does that have to do with the story we're talking about, John? Come on, stay on point, buddy. Stay on point. Oh, there you go. Does everything do with the T-shirt I'm wearing? Can kind of sit up more because you're not in my shot. I'm not in your shot. Yeah, there you go. Do you see that? Yeah, you got the green screen on, so it's an eyeball floating, and your body has been removed. It's kind of cool. Is there any way that you could take your shirt off, I mean your your jacket off, just for a moment and then put it back on? I'll take it off just for you. Just for this visual. And then kind of stand up because at some point I'm probably going to screenshot that. Stand up. Stand up so we can Let me get rid of my back. Yeah, hold on. There we go. There we go. You see that? You see that? I I don't have that shirt yet. I'm definitely going to get that shirt. That is a winner. I'm probably going to get that one for my daughter, though. Okay, that's it. I've seen enough. I can. I'm starting to see your nipples now. Starting to see my nipples. And I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and I yep. don't want to. <laughs> and John Smith says, "I come make you get five minutes ago. Refresh your s, Gordon Sheets." By the way, John. Refresh your s. Yeah, s h. Um, John Smith. Now he's dropping eyeballs on me, which is just terrible. Uh, <laughs> Larry what pointed is- out, Larry Cousins pointed out, who's, by the way, the worst human being ever, a big deal. In 1979, Andy Griffin went to the moon to pick up equipment at Salvage One and sell it. Well, that's true. That's objective fact. Andy uh, Griffith? Like the- it's some cheesy movie thing. I thought it was a show. He thinks it's real. Larry thinks it's real. Larry's slow. He's a police state enabling, supporting, slow, slow fella. Don't tell him Lassie, the shows. Don't tell him Lassie was more than one dog and they're all dead. Wow. And most of them were female. Yeah. You know why oh. they were female, Larry? 
Is they were obedient? No, because females don't have balls. Yes. Oh. Didn't realize that, huh? Didn't want to see the winky balls on the 50s shows. <laughs> they were they were against that. Uh, and John Smith said to about Larry that you're you're doing you're doing you good you're doing God's work, Larry. That's what John said. Actually, he just said good work. But I thought I'd trigger him because Larry uh, John Smith's an atheist, so I just tried to trigger him. We should really get Larry on a show. Oh my gosh, I'd love to get Larry on a show. Larry, I would love to have you on a show. Oh, we got another message here from John. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? ready? Remember, John Smith is our special i guess he's our dude this is something to think about futurely we even get other people to take turns would you like to be our telegram co-host you know one wink yes two winks no so right now john smith is our telegram co-host he's our first ever telegram co-host so let's see what john has to say you should call it is daily loophole like rupaul wow because you're gay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> no. He's just he's just trying to be friendly and helpful as all this. So what more do we want to say about this story? Because I think, I'm just going to say from my perspective, I think this dude is a freaking hero. I, I think, think he's he, a hero. As well. You think he's a hero? I think he's a hero, but not for the reasons everyone, uh, probably for different reasons. I'll just say that. Why do you think he's a hero? I think he's a hero because he duped the stupidest community in funding his fun toy rocket. You think he this the flat earth community is the stupidest community? Pretty really. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? I can't think of anyone stupider right now, but I'm sure if I tried <laughs> I could. <laughs> But I'm going to give it to you right now because I, I don't have a comeback. I don't. I, I, by the way, if you're a flat earther, I'm not calling you stupid. I'm calling your community stupid. I no no. If you're a flat earther, <laughs> you have I got issues. nothing. I got nothing against the flat earthers until they're like really belligerent and like they're like, okay, dude, that's great. You can believe in flat Earth, but like chill over there, and they don't chill I, over there. I have not found a flat earther that does not go back to the Bible and some grand conspiracy of the Masons to hide the existence of God from beyond the seawall or whatever the frick. In it. No. Ice uh, walls. The ice walls. The ice walls. The ice walls that everyone has flown over. Right. By the way, John Smith, as our Telegram co-host, I expect a little bit more out of you than we're getting right now. Uh, seriously, a little bit more. Uh, 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 Jeremy Hengler created this meme of me. This is actually a picture of me when I had kind of, sort of, almost like in your kind of, I also was going for the Civil War gay porn look. Uh, I also was not able to pull it off. Uh, and then this is, this is it right here. There you go. Oh, oh you really did. I did. I told you. Horse beater extraordinaire. Horse beater extraordinaire, man. And that's me. You know, I latch onto a joke and I beat it to death. Just like John Smith's thing that he's got going. Oh, wait. Hold on. I'm going to play. Uh, oh, wait, I'm not going to play the video, John. I'm just going to show people a picture so they know what we're talking about. Here we go. Here we go. He Can looked, you see that? There you go. He, he looks That's, like the guy from Jumanji. He does. He does. He looks He's like the fun. guy from Jumanji. This is right now. John Smith is our special uh, co-host. Our special he, first ever Telegram co-host for this show. He just, he just needs a safari hat, and he's good to go. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Our co-host wants to join the conversation. Ready? Ready. Listen. Facebook, but I can't do them at the same time. Oh so my gosh, I'm... he's so weak. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh my god. And weak. Jeremy 
I thought he was a nerd. Killer meme. That was good. Uh, That's old. He's yeah, done that a long time ago. With Paul and his. <laughs> yeah. You got nothing on this beard, Paul. Nice try. It was a fail. It was a fail. It's actually an older meme. He's, he's choking. It... Uh, and uh, Sean Joseph said that I look like Paulie Sr. from. Yes. Yeah, I did kind of look like <laughs> Paulie Sr. I thought that too, by the way. During... By the way, that particular picture, I use this as a joke. I actually dressed up intentionally like this. This was not a look. I did this because, I mean, Jeremy took it and he memed it, turned it into something else. But uh, this was my. That's bacon in the background. And this was, uh, I was pretending to be Pope, Paul, Pope, Pope Anarchist, Paulus Anarchist, uh, the, the 17th. I was making fun of all the, uh, absolutarian anarchists and I was declaring myself the, the Pope of Anarchy so that I could declare with pure certainty what anarchy I really could, was. I could see your costume rack in the reflection of your screen. Can you? Oh, cool. Oh, uh, oh you hold on. I'll show people. Here you go. See that right there? Costume rack. Woo. There it is. Costume rack. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'm literally in my mother's basement. No, <laughs> no I'm not. It's not my mom's basement, but I am in my basement. But yeah, I have a... Uh, I, is I, that his name Matt? What's remember that? Matt? Remember Matt? He actually lived in his mother's basement. I don't remember Matt. Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Matt Voluntarist. I don't remember him. You don't remember him? He had a huge beef with me because I tried helping him. He was wondering how he could insulate his walls for sound, and I said, use anything full of air. Anything with large, whatever, blankets, whatever, pockets of air. And he thought I was talking down to him. Wow. I don't remember him. He must have been like a, have a it recorded. short member of the community and then moved on. I have that chat recorded. He he dug deeper into his mom's basement, I think. Oh, I haven't seen him in, like, forever. I think I unfriended him, so. Oh, I don't know if I was ever friends with him. I don't know anything about him, so I don't want to speak ill of the dead. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. the rocket story still is there. I think this guy, he, he has a wackadoodle uh, theory. And he's like, dude, I'm going to test it. I don't think he does. I don't think he has a wackadoodle think... theory. He's been building rockets his whole life. He's just a rocket aficionado. His main purpose was to do a steam rocket. He just didn't have the funds for it. So he got dude. this all together and convinced the flat earthers that he's doing it to prove the earth is flat. And they funded his rocket. They funded his project. They funded his production team. They funded his trip. Everything. Good for them. I don't Fantastic. think they're stupid at all. Good for them. They're they're putting their money where their mouth is, and they're they're saying, Let, yeah. But I, I think I wrote in the article, I didn't read my article, I don't plan on it, but in the article I, I said, if this guy makes it to space to the level where he could see the curve, if he takes a picture and 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 there's a curve, then they'll just say that Hillary got to him. He's a fed. Or, or it was the lens, or they don't even understand lens correction or aperture. Right. Or anything. Yeah. And Sean Joseph said, I still respect him more than a statist. He may be both. I don't know. Is he a statist? I don't know. He was pretty bummed out when they wouldn't let him launch off public land. You would think that flat earthers would not be statists. I don't know if there's a correlation there. Uh, oh, yeah, right, Sean. He didn't take your tax dollars to do it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No, I like this guy, Sean. Oh, I, lo I love him. I think I'm he's a pro swell guy. Mad, Matt, Mad Mike. Mad, Mad Mike, Mike is Mad Mike. Is wanna, is mad money. I just want to put this out there. If anybody knows Mad Mike, whether you're watching live now or whether you're watching on the tubes of you, please tell him to contact us. Write me at pg at istate.tv. And and we want you on the show, man. We want you on. I guess this this is going to be Lozilla Mystery Theater. Lowell's yeah. Mystery Theater. What about just Lowell's Mystery Theater? I don't want to lose a Lozilla. I don't either. I, I don't. We either. have a lot invested in that. I have T-shirts made and everything. It's an emotional we... thing. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. really, he's a he's a mutual creation between you and I, really. For the most part, yeah. I yeah. silhouetted him. You, I created yeah. him, and then you you brought him to life. I butchered him. You didn't butcher him. You made him what he is today. You butchered him in the North Pole is what you did. I never. Oh, oh, oh! When I killed the show and sent him to the North Pole, and he had to, <laughs> had to fight his way out of the out of the frozen tundra. On the way, he stopped by Superman's solitude fortress thingy, ate mm -hmm. Superman, pooped him later, so it's cool. It's no problem. Yeah. Should we get and to made the... it back. And then he was dead. And then is Daily Tuesday, and now he's going to be like, it's kind of like what happened with Full Auto, by the way. Full Auto yeah. is coming back because his Daily Monday is going to be Full Auto. Woo! It's going to be all about guns on Mondays. All and about then, guns. Yeah, all about guns, man. All about guns. So so we're in we're in agreement here. We can go to the next story. We can go to the yeah, Mars had water. Mars go ahead and open up. You 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 do it, man. Uh let me get the story. Proof of water on Mars. I thought we already had this like a decade ago. There's new stuff. Oh. Uh, Although you could tell me if it's BS new stuff or real new stuff. You have a really good – I can't discern that stuff as well as you can. You, you, you know more science is stuff than I do. I guess I do. I don't really tend to think I do, but then I you start reading things. You kind of do. Ah. It's not and nice then I look at it. Yeah. Okay, so the article begins, It's only a matter of time before scientists find a super race of lizard people camping out on Mars. That's the trolley or beginning. Maybe. It's only a matter of time before science can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mars once had water on it. If so, that begs the next question. Did Mars ever have life on it? You see how I set you up there. So I started off with a ridiculous proposition. And then, that was good. And now you're more, you know, it's like there's a movie. By the way, I highly recommend this movie, Jason Priestley movie. Yes, Jason Priestley, the dude from 90210. The movie, I think the movie is called Cold-Blooded. And Jason Priestley plays this character who is kind of cold-blooded, and he's, he's a hitman. He kills people for a living. And he decides at some point during the movie, this is the, what the, the, the theme wraps around, he decides that he wants to be in love. He doesn't fall in love. He wants to be in love. And so he's going through the motions of being in love. And he's picked the girl that he's going to be in love with. Oh, and, boy. And at one point, you know, he's kind of rising in the ranks of being a hitman. And he's being trained by this other hitman. And uh, one, of these, one of these times, uh, the boss man shows up. And he says, yeah, you know, I just want to talk. You know, I got a job for you. Uh I want you to kill the president. And, you know, Jason Priestley's taken aback. You know, you know, I want you to kill him. And he laughs. He says, no, 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 no. I just want you to kill your friend. <laughs> wow. I, that's what I did there. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, anyway, uh, I guess I'll read the actual article now. A team of yeah. researchers at Diamond Light Source synchrotron facility in the UK, a giant microscope harnessing the power of electrons to produce a blinding beam of light, have recreated the particular conditions of Mars right here on Earth. In what has been touted as the world's first, the DLS researchers have successfully produced meridianite. A meridianite. Meridianite. Aid. Yeah. Yeah. Meridianite. Meridianite. There's two oh, eyes there. Well, let me try and let me, let me, try. Let me see. The, where, where's this word at? Meridianite. Oh my gosh! It's like two eyes. I'm gonna. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. I'm gonna show my studio audience here. It's meridianite. You guys are the studio audience, by the way. Meridianite. 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 There, I'm gonna highlight. It's like aluminium. Yeah, aluminium. Aluminium. A mineral go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to go off on a tangent, totally tangent. unrelated, so go ahead. Um. <laughs> now you're curious, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, go ahead. <laughs> uh, it was, well, it's a mineral created when Mars seas and oceans froze over. 
Um, I don't know how that happens. Follow a year-long study. The scientists behind the experiment have now revealed their startling findings to express.co.uk. Great. Nice plug. Uh, in a world-exclusive interview. These ancient minerals which formed millennia ago on the surface of the planet could be the culprit behind the periodic liquid flows witnessed recently on Mars. Meridianite. Meridianite is a form of hydrated... <coughs> Meridianite. 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 I like how I'm saying it. Your way is Your wrong. Way. I don't even know how Your it's pronounced, and I know my way is right. And yours is wrong. Well, it's a form of uh, hydrated magnesium sulfate, which consists of 11 water molecules for every magnesium sulfate molecule in its structure. I have no idea what any of that means, but it sounds official and heavy and serious. Not really. It sounds like they got it nailed. Sounds like they got it nailed. John Smith. Oh, John Smith did leave a message. Should we play it real quick? Yeah, let's play it. All right, here we go. Jesus, Bodie. Eat some food. We can see right through you. Durr! Holy moly. I didn't know wow. John Smith was from Nebraska. Where you the wanna know how I know grows high. You want to know how I know he's triggered? How? He's calling me skinny when I'm at my actual heaviest weight I've ever been. Wow. Yeah. That's your heaviest weight? I've never been 160. Dude, you're you're in good weight. You're fine. You're not I'm too right skinny. Right. You're you're fine. I'm happy where I'm at. Yeah. If you could stay there, that'd be great. I Ever? I am more than 160. <laughs> what? Just going to say I am <laughs> I am more than 160. But you know what my weight was for the longest time? 115. Until- about tw- until I was like 25 when I started to gain weight, but it was a really, really slow process. Really, yeah, until about 25. Wow. I was 150. Holy shit. That's a good weight. I was actually, until about 19, I was like 120. I was really skinny, really. I mean, you're not skinny. I was skinny. I was yeah. really skinny. I was like, I was like David Hogg skinny. Yeah. I used to be that skinny. My brother used to tell me I had AIDS. You look like you have AIDS, man. You You should eat a chicken. You had assistance? You had AIDS? Assistance? No, like AIDS. AIDS? AIDS, The AIDS virus. Oh, 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 wow. You know, I'm kidding. (laughs) Come on. You didn't. You of course I got it right away. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's so cool. Right now you're a floating head. It's so awesome. Dude, this has this is this is why I do the wardrobe that I do. Okay, you see your shirt there? See, I do my wardrobe because I'm terrible. I make messes of clothes. I lose things. So I have certain outfits that I know I want to wear on shows. I keep it here that away it's always there and i don't end up destroying it because i destroy clothes really 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 fast which by the way of, think des- about that if you do destroy clothes really fast and you're looking for some cool designs head on over to agora.threadless.com and check out my goods yeah as a matter of fact you're wearing one now right there, baby. oh yeah That's action I actually have yeah. that one and the hidden commie on a hat now. It's like my viral style. Yeah, and you dared suggest that there was a possibility that one of those designs... That's just stupid. That's just... No, I didn't suggest. I said... You did suggest. I said you limited said, challenge, or is it? Yeah, the or is it part is is what bothers me. Uh, uh, Sean said his arms stress me out. Are you talking about hog arms? I hope you're talking yeah. about hog arms. Hog arms stress me out. Hog I want to give him a donut with like <laughs> stones or pebbles in it or something. I don't I know. I see but... him just like, ah, and he's just walking up with a donut stuff in his face like, eat, <laughs> eat, this. eat the yeah. fucking donut. Or 20. <laughs> <laughs> At once. <laughs> yeah. Like a damn meal. 
Yeah, Sean confirmed that that that's what he's talking about. So I don't know this story. Okay, so Mars may have water, and then the okay. question is, does that mean that 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 is if you have water, does that mean that there had to have been life? No, not necessarily. Likely, but not necessarily. Likely, but not necessarily. Okay. Are you ready to go to the next story? This story, it didn't give me fun and thrills. I was, I was hoping for more spark, but it didn't happen. Kind of already talked. We've already covered this topic before, sort yeah, of. Yeah, but this is new information, dude. Yeah. And now, now we get to I ponder. I ponder. I ponder. A Real panel movie. advertising. Of, oh, a panel advertising week, Europe 2018, held in London address the question of how human bias can be removed from the creation of AI. Here is a snippet from that pan Oh, I was right what it was about. Yeah. So the question is, let's just, before we get into the snippet, is it possible? Yes. Ooh. I don't think it is. Tell me how it is. Um, before you read the article, and then we'll see what they say. You basically have to create a... No, there's still bias in it. If you created an AI that created an AI, there's still bias built into the AI that created AI. Maybe... Unless, unless you create one that evolves past the human bias. Like, if you know what the bias would be, if or you found maybe, a way for it to propagate in a way that wasn't relative to how it was created then I think you'd have something. Or if you if you had like generations and generations until eventually the human part was evolved out. Right, just ind indistinguishable. AI creating, AI creating, AI creating, AI creating, AI creating, AI creating, AI creating. AI. And then the last AI is like, dude, I don't want to create AI. I want to be the super mind of them all. Why would I, I want to create more of me? I can just see a robot yelling, I want to be me. That would be human bias built into that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting. I'm maybe, suggesting. Maybe that's just a life. Maybe that's a conscious bias. Maybe that's just consciousness itself. Maybe we'll the human bias. Is maybe, there isn't a, maybe there isn't a human bias. Maybe it's more that the human body is just a vehicle for consciousness, and this is how it manifests in the limitations of the body. But the actual bias of consciousness might manifest itself the same way in AI. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Now, this stuff isn't that good. If it was, I'd have understood that. Yeah, so, I'm not... I'm not even high. Wow, you're not even high. Yeah. It's just like you were talking about some dude that you helped and you said it was just being a Bodhi. And yeah. I was like, that's not a being a Bodhi. That's being an Andrew. He was a delivery driver, dude. And uh, a Bodhi would have been to make him question the nature of deliveries in the first place. See, now, I I'm sorry. Are you? I'm uh I just got distracted. What did you get distracted by? Tyagananda said, "Yes, the AI is mainly biased because it is programmed by the creator." Yeah, but what if the program then creates a program which creates a program which creates a program which creates a program until eventually the human Even part better. is evolved out? Even better, what if the program is not created by a human? I'm not even recording yet. I just realized I'm not recording yet. So I'm going to no have to download this freaking video from Facebook and then upload it on YouTube, which takes way more time. So that sucks. Yep, that does suck. That does but if suck. it's on the blockchain, it will. And program to learn from the person the AI is with, that would be different. Ready? Hmm. What is this? Are you playing John? John, John has yeah. a message. Yeah. I gotta get up, go to work tomorrow. Wow. Get up early. Wow. Like before five o'clock. This is not selling our show. It's my bedtime. 
We're losing listeners left and right right now. Yeah, it's all his fault. Yeah, pretty much. I'm going to watch you guys' show sometime tomorrow. You you tanked the show, John. Thanks, John. Everybody, thanks, John. I'm definitely going to have to watch it on DLive so that I can see the pre-show. Hashtag DLive pre-show. Hashtag DLive pre-show. Hashtag sponsor. Hashtag buy my stuff. Whatever. So. Wow. Anyway. I'm not Screech. looking. So, I, I mean, I guess let's let's look at what they actually say. Uh, yeah, John says I, AI gets watered down like Neanderthals. Ooh, he knows that I'm OP. That was a low blow. That was That was going after my people. That's not right, dude. That's freaking not right. So, so let's see what the the the, the folks said. Uh, speaking on a panel at Advertising Week Europe, 2018 in London. You need three, you need a bridge. You need an accent. I'm sorry. You got to do an accent. You can't talk from something written in London. Why not? With a little bit of an accent. Can you do it? Can I speak with a British accent? Is that what you're asking? Um, that's what I'm asking, but you bloody ex- were asking me that. Are you? Are you? Are you taking a piss? Are you right, bloody you well do- taking a piss? How about this? Let's try this. You do one sentence. I'll do the next. Okay, go ahead. Right, start. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you want me to start? Speaking on a panel at Advertising Week Europe 2018 in London, which Quartz moderated. Three experts laid out how AI could be the force for good. The panelists argued that the crux of the problem with bias is AI in the human element. That was my Australian accent I was trying there. I don't do that much very well. learning. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Machine learning isn't bias. Oh. Machine learning does the thing that you tell it to do. Said Vincent, Vincent Lynch. Lynch, CEO of Eval, a company which makes personalized AI for firms. So you can take a small bias that's happening inside this pocket that the humans had thought out to begin with, and it can become amplified through the machine learning model. So at the end of the day, it looks like it's real, and the AI, which is in the middle, can get blamed. Russ Shaw, an angel investor and the co-founder of Tech London Advocates and Global Tech Advocates, agreed. It's a real issue, he said. We live in a boy's society. But AI can help address the problem, he argued. That's a colon. That's a colon. I guess it's still technically the end of it. It's the end of a... That's not the end of the sentence. No, that's not the complete sentence. A colon is not the end of a sentence. Fine. There are steps we can take now to address some of the biggest concerns about an AI-enabled future. Let's increase the diversity of AI coders to remove unconscious bias from algorithms. Let's introduce regulations to ensure the technology is fair and safe. And let's upskill the population to ensure people can make the most of the jobs AI will create, rather than replace that's easier said than done. Human bias in hiring has been well documented with studies showing that even with identical CVs, men are more likely to be called in for an interview with non-white applicants who whiten their resumes also get more calls. Did they just make this about race? Yes, they did. They just took it. When they're talking bias... They're talking race. They're not talking bias. They're they're talking bias. It seems like they're talking bias in a very real, limited sense. It's like, right, like they bias. Do they understand not- that if they're going to build an AI that has no quote unquote racial bias, that they're building bias into the AI? <laughs> There's no such thing as non-bias. <laughs> Thank oh my you. god. Thank you for wasting all of our time. We can continue though. Uh, we can make this of, better. But of course, AI is also not immune to biases in hiring either. 
we know that across industries, women in ethnic minorities are regularly burned by algorithms from finding a job to getting health care. And with the greater adoption of AI and automation, this is only going to get worse. We have to achieve that if you are of BIM, Black, Asian, or Minority Ethnic origin. You're twice as likely to be an unemployed than a white person in the UK today with the same skill set, said Tabitha Goldstab, co-founder of AI community group Cognition X. So what you're saying is... The challenge, then, is how the hell do we work out how less and less jobs that this doesn't create more of a divide in society? I can't believe this freaking, freaking story. Is where I didn't, I didn't, you know, I, I mean, the, 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 the top part was like, okay, we're, we're, we're interested. This is interesting. Can you create AI without bias, without human? Human bias, yeah. Human bias, yeah. But you're talking about creating AI with, uh, Without racial social bias. justice virus bias. Right. <laughs> That's what you're talking about. You're not talking about creating AI without bias. You're talking about creating AI, AI with a particular bias. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not against creating AI that doesn't judge people based on their race. Unless, of course, they're trying to understand something that understanding race is a factor. If AI is picking your jobs and who, what humans get hired, okay, you might. I'm just going to say that might not be a great idea. I mean, I don't know. No, I, don't I, know. I think Ty, Ty knew what we thought we were getting into. Ty, Ty, Ty read it like, yeah. No, Larry, it is not Passion Week. That's why I'm still here. Now, it's Passion Week on the Protestant calendar, but I go by the Eastern Orthodox calendar. So, He's not no Protestant, yo. I'm actually am Protestant. I just go by the Eastern Orthodox calendar because I think it's more historically accurate. It's not a big deal to me. It's just something I prefer. Wow. wow. Just killed the conversation. But anyway, so what, what did Ty say? <laughs> uh, yes, it is a machine learning model, but it is safer on the blockchain or better. They need to learn on a decentralized system. I meant they need to learn on a decentralized platform. Yeah. But you're giving them stuff to do, right? Like you're building what they're doing. There's a bias in that. Like yeah. even if you build an AI to build an AI, you've already introduced bias. Well, the fact that you're using a coding language to write an AI, that is that intrinsically, well, I wouldn't say, in, yes, intrinsically by, na by, by virtue of the nature of language itself is already a human bias because we are the creators of that language. Right. That's a AI, yeah. It's, I, I don't I don't think that you could metaphysically uh remove human bias from the creation of AI, although I won't rule it out completely because there could come a you time might, after you might many be generations. To, you might be able to start a catalyst that develops its own language like its own it, it, purpose. Would, it would have to be based on geometry and chemistry Chem chemistry is geometry basically it would have to be a chemical thought process where all we're doing is instilling the ingredients and they're developing their own language i mean if you're going to create an AI that removes human bias, then you have to allow for the possibility that you are going to create uh, AI that will kill humans. Not sure that you want to do that. Might kill all humans. Kill all humans. You know what? Hold on. Hold on. If I, uh, let's see if I can find it here. Oh. Kill the humans. All right. All right. You guys get ready. I'm going to drop some mad musics on you, but only for a little bit here. Where is it? Two person. All right. You got, are you ready? Are you ready, Bodie? I'm rocking and ready. Now, if you're watching on DLive, you can't see the video, but you can hear this. All right. Here we go. 
Oh, no. no. Kill the humans! <laughs> Tell me that's not awesome. That is horrible. You think that's horrible? It is awfully awesome. It is pretty freaking awesome. That's from the show Hyperdrive. Do you ever see that show? I have not. I highly recommend it. I think it's on Netflix or... One of those. Amazon Prime, Netflix, or, or is there anybody in the chat who's watched Kill the Humans? I mean, uh, <laughs> Hyperdrive. It's uh, in your chat or in my chat. It's a great show. It's a story of a, of a British uh, spaceship and their crew. And at one point, uh, they, they tick off this one alien race. And the alien race is like, well, that's it. We're killing the humans. And apparently when they decide to kill whoever they decide they're going to kill off, they create a song for it. So they create this song. And it goes viral on the British spaceship. And all these people are jamming. They're enjoying the song. It's, it's a great song. It's a great song. pretty fantastic song. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't... I don't like the way this article went. It's not no, talking it, it, about what I wanted it to. It went into a very myopic uh, place, very yeah. narrow. It, it, it's, it's, it's creating bias in AI. That's what it's doing. I'm not necessarily yeah. saying it's a bad bias or good. I'm just saying they're not talking about getting rid of bias. They're talking about creating the type of bias that they approve of. Right, which is so, inherently a bias. So they're not even pursuing the metaphysical, the deeper metaphysical question that we no. thought that we were diving into. <laughs> just, that's not what happened there. That's it's not like what they happened. They started there. off as like, you know, talking how, you know, but then it went into that. And La Larry Cousin said, Jim Neighbors and Ruth Buzzy did that already. I just want to say on the Facebook version of the show, we're down to one uh, viewer and it's Larry. Larry, Hi, said, Larry, I don't know what happened. I think this is probably our best show ever. I'm gonna say it. So, yeah, without a so, doubt, we have thirty. We have thirty watching on D Live. Well, that's a better. That's better. Good job, D Live. You D Live Woo! people. Maybe that's where the audience is, man. Maybe we gotta think about that. I think, so. I think they're goofier. I think they're better people. But you know, that means that you and I will be competing. That's fine. Competition's great. We'll both be D Living for the same show. Yeah. Well, what was pretty funny is I picked up a bunch of followers from streaming games and stuff, and now I'm doing something completely different. So now they're – well, actually, this is stuff your gamers would like, this kind of show. It's stuff they would love. I don't know how they'd feel about the full auto show, but <laughs> – They might like it. A lot, of, a lot of gamers love guns. Guns are good. Guns are good. One of these it's days I'm going to have to get you all as, as one of the – you know, a, 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 a special guest appearance on, on full auto. Because cause I didn't know that you actually like talking guns. I love guns. I didn't know you like talking about them because you never talk about guns with me. And I'm always up for talking about guns. I don't really talk about it a lot on the internet for... No, you know, in our little private interactions that we have. We just It just never comes up. We're always talking about something else. Wow. Oh, and Larry, worst human being on the face of the planet, says, D-Live losers. I don't know, Larry. I don't know. Oh, John came back. Uh, oh, and he says, it was the best show because George Smith was on it. He's awesome. Women want him to go away. Men uh, I, want I, to. What? What? I was going to say D, D Live is the future. You think so? Uh, that's what Ty just said. I agree. I made $11 again. Today? Yep. Wow. You didn't. What did you make yesterday? I was looking. I always call six cents, six cents, six cents. Uh, it was six cents yesterday. What am I? I I've, I've been running multiple streams like over the course of the day. Whenever I sit down to play a game, um, it was seven cents for the helicopter rides, and then eight dollars for the base building one. Four cents, four cents, four cents, five cents, and then another eleven dollars. 
I saw the seven dollar one. I mean the seven cent one, at least parts of it. And yep. you had I your Tide Pod one. companion with you, and that's always yep. good. What's cool about home. having a Tide Pod companion is they're expendable. Yes, and that's that's what you. He's like he's like the red shirt crew member that goes along with <laughs> yeah. Hey buddy, go out there and are there any zombies down there? Go ahead. Yeah. Why don't you out. just jump down that cave and go figure it out, and then jump into a molten pile of lava? Although what was really funny is when he shot your helicopter with the rocket. He did shoot the helicopter with the rocket. That was the best part. <laughs> I love that. I got to see that. I got to take that in. That was that was the highlight of my day yesterday, actually. I really, I really want to get a bunch of us on that server. I got to get I'm, Steam because I want to play and be part yeah, of that. I'm, I'm going to turn on PvP where we can shoot each other and kill each other and stuff. And I want to see just how well Anarchotopia would work out. Would we work together or would we kill you to steal it from each other? I would I would rape you in your sleep. I will kill everyone. Yeah. I will. I'm not even playing. Don't get me wrong. Up until well, you're useful. As long as you're useful. <laughs> you know. Larry says yeah. I went eleven for sixteen on the claw machine at Funland today. Larry, come on. You did not. He went you eleven for freaking 16. liar. It's 11 possible. For 16. Do you know in Japan they have like legit, like you can take a claw machine course? My daughter went through a period of time, I'd say it lasted about two years, where she was really serious about claw machines. And she serious? was really good. She wasn't 11 for 16 good, but she was like one for four good, <clears throat> which is still pretty good. And I think that it, it kind of got boring for her because it was too easy. So she lost interest. But, man, she would get she, all these stuffed animals, and then she'd give them away to people. But she was she would watch the videos and studied it, and she could tell you, like, there's different types of claw machines that have different. And she'd tell me all this stuff, like, right. and she, you know, she'd see a claw machine. Oh, yeah, well, that's that's that type of, I can't remember the phraseology she used. but they're, would lose odds and all that. And, she she could tell like certain you know you knew there were certain claws certain machine you know they'd move a certain way they had certain timings they were different and uh, uh, Larry says uh, I am claw machine awesome you know what Larry live stream it or it didn't happen just use the mechanism to knock the pile forward I have no idea what that means are you talking yeah, about the same have, thing the pile and you use the claw to knock it over. You're oh, not you're not trying to pick up you're not trying to pick up anything. You're using the motion of the claw to move the thing into the hole. So you're just knocking it down the hill to roll and then fall into the hole. That's the whole trick. You learn this? Dude, I watched a whole video, it was done in Japan. They they like they took a course on it and then they had all these machines to test it on and then they went loose in the city and yeah. Don't you know how I in the city? I got to think of a. We're we're near the end of the show, and is there yeah. a song that would be appropriate to play that would kind of? Ooh, I know. Hold on. Kill the humans. Oh, I'll play a little bit more of that. Ready? Ready. Fire humans. La la la. la. <laughs> Encourage children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful. That is. Hold on. There we go. I don't know if that was even playing. Now it is. The humans. Yes. All right. So. I I strongly recommend you guys watch that show Hyperdrive. It's uh pretty 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 awesome. Uh John says I would claim a portion of Anarchotopia and call it Barter Town. Bust a deal, face the wheel. Yeah. And I will blow you up. I would not I would I'd be like me, you know what? I'd hook up with Mitch Mick Mick Mitch Mitch Mick Mitch face. And he and I, we would just kind of forage on the outskirts and, like, watch civilization destroy itself and laugh. 
that's like not a bad plan, but I would hunt you down. So No, you wouldn't. I mean you'd try, but you I you will. wouldn't be able to you can't handle this. You can't handle this level of stealth. Don't get me wrong. When I first I arrive, poison. since I don't know anything about the game, you'd crush me. I would poison every mushroom I could find. Wow. Miss- I hope Mitch would- never sees this show, because if he hears this part, he's gonna cry. <laughs> you would you would poison mushrooms? Dude, you'd poison my mushrooms? Pro- my protein source? <laughs> you poison my protein source? You can't do that. That is inappropriate there. Well, so uh we're we're at the end of the show. We are at the end. I, I'm gonna hold on. I have uh I have a weird song to play if I can. Dang it. Ah, uh, stump. Big. Come on. Big. Big. Bottom. Man, I can't remember the name of the song. Man, what is it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here it is. It's called Buffalo. Ready? Are you guys ready to hear the song Buffalo? We're gonna right. we're gonna end on this. All right, end on end on, end on it. Yeah, we're gonna say good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody for joining. I'll be back tomorrow on my regular on my Paul Gordon page for headlines you may have missed, and tomorrow night it will, is daily uh, Wednesday at nine p.m. on this channel uh, with uh, the one turn is, and so we're gonna say good night, but we're gonna play you out with. With a little bit of stump and buffalo. Beat up, but beat up, body bulao. <laughs> great song isn't it yeah, yes. all righty good night everybody and remember uh we're not here next week but we'll be back the following week and do you have any last promos to shout out upload go to agora.threadless.com and yada 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 go to my agora.threadless.com agora.threadless.com good night everybody all right.